And yes, I'm very excited and delighted to introduce you to an amazing woman. We're talking about someone who can help you with your business, help you better understand branding, and you will be inspired. This is a woman who has overcome many challenges to include breast cancer. She's gone through it. And without further delay, I want you to meet her up close and right now. I sat down with Wendy Bryant Go. And you know what? As always, she shares some nuggets that help me. And it is my goal that what you will hear from her will help you. Let's jump into it. <laughs> Author and nutritionist Robert Ferguson. Please welcome Robert Ferguson. All right, y'all, let's hear it for America's Fat Loss Coach, Robert Ferguson. All right, Wendy, you know what? I am so thankful that you have made time to sit down with me and share information that I believe can help anybody. Now, I know about you, but the people who are meeting you for the first time aren't. So, would you be kind? Uh, and and don't be humble. <laughs> Give us a little background. Who is Wendy Bryant Gal? Who am I? Yeah, who are you and your business? Like, let, let's just give us some background, and then we're going to dive in. I got a thousand questions for you. Ah, uh, thank you, dear friend. It's nice to be with you. Um, so I am an international image consultant and brand strategist. I work with individuals and corporations on um in the in, in the case of the individuals on building their brand or in some cases rebuilding their brand and for corporations universities hospitals organizations i work with different sectors within those communities on helping them to define the brand that they are working with um, or representing and understanding the importance of brand extension i started this company gosh 40 years ago, <laughs> giving myself away, my age away, in New York. And um, as I was a buyer and then in ready to wear, and then I um, actually transitioned over into the beauty industry. Uh, and that's where I sort of got the foundation for uh, building this company. So I started with individuals and then it grew exponentially from that. And now I represent clients and corporations all over the world. Wow. So so let me compliment you because oftentimes, let's say that someone wants to lose weight. They mm -hmm. go into a facility or they go to a gym and they hire a trainer or they get them a trainer and the trainer shows up and they look like they could lose weight. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it, my point is I'm complimenting you because, yes, you help everyone else with their image and how they come across. You look like I would actually listen to you based on just how you look. You are always so kind. Thank you. And it's a pleasure. Uh, for, thank you for saying that. No, you and I actually met years ago in Washington. I think it was you and I were both mm. guest speakers um, at a forum there. And that's how we met. And that's um, right. At the, big, at the big conference, beautiful woman inside and out. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, but thank you for saying that. Um, okay. Now, there's quite a bit that you shared in that. And I get what you're saying. But let's go elementary. And you guys, okay. trust me, for those of you who understand branding, stay there because we're going to get into it. But let's start with, because I have a lot of coaches that are new to being an entrepreneur personally. Right. And I'm talking real fast about branding. You know, you got to create your brand. What is your brand? Make your brand like live and like make it pop. Can we start there? Like, let's do some basics. Like, what do you mean when you say like build a brand or extend a brand. What is what, what what do we mean when we say brand? Well, and of course we're talking about professionals. So we're talking about how they present themselves on a day in day out basis. The minute you exit that uh, room, you enter that room, sorry, you are presenting yourself. And so are you presenting the best version of yourself to sell yourself? Because we're selling ourselves in a professional situation every day. So mm. how are you presenting yourself from your visual presentation? to your communication techniques, to your introductory skills, even your, your etiquette, your business etiquette, how you shake your hands, how you um, sit at a dinner table, if you're taking clients out to lunch or if you're being taken out to lunch, for example, if you're in an interview uh, process and they're taking you out to lunch, 
are you um, presenting the best version of yourself while you're sitting there at that table from understanding how to dine correctly, understanding how to order correctly, those sort of things. So we cover all aspects of your image and branding, even uh, for my clients who travel for a living when they're getting on those airplanes and they might be handing out a business card to the person seated beside them. They're an extension of that business card. Therefore, they're an extension of their personal and professional brand. What's on the other end of that business card? Because I am so shocked on so many occasions when I'm flying with somebody on a plane and they are presenting their business card to me and how they look, how people travel. So if you are traveling and representing your business or if you are at any point in time thinking that you might be presenting your business, talking, discussing your business or presenting your business card, what do you look like on the other end and how are you presenting yourself? So we work with all of those things, reminding people. It's so funny, Robert, when people go into job interviews, they always put their best foot forward. They always look so perfect, right? Or they, they're attempting to look that way, we hope. Then once they get those jobs, things tend to kind of get a little bit slacked off so often, which I've always wondered. Every day is an opportunity. Every day is an extension of that brand that you're building. How are you presenting that? And how? what kind of communication are you reflecting in the way you present yourself daily? And so we're, we're reminding them of those things because so often I think we get lost in that. Mm. You know, man, that is, okay. So we now live in this world where there's social media, mm -hmm. right? So someone goes in and of course you always show the best of who you are when you're doing an interview. It's like, I'm selling this brand of who I am. Absolutely. And then a lot of these companies will go on Facebook or see if they can find you on Instagram. Exactly. And on Instagram, you're doing shots. You're like, <laughs> <"Woo -hoo." laughs> yeah. And that's the whole point. Are they really thinking carefully daily, hourly, how they're presenting themselves? Because all of that is so important to the, to the bottom line. Mm. So we remind them of those things. And so that's part of what we do. We work with them on their social media. Um, anything having to do with professional and their personal brand, we work with them on. Okay. So I want to like, so I have a ton of coaches that are nutritionists. Mm -hmm. And so on Facebook, a lot of their posts, you know, they're posting eating like, big old things of ice cream uh like big old pound cakes and you know they're and, doing that they're eating those things <laughs> oh i mean i'm not all of my coaches but i have seen this right right and yet they in my opinion and this is not judgment they want to come across as creditable and someone right. i would go to for help but i'm sitting there watching and i'm going the photos aren't adding up to how I believe you want to be branded. Exactly. And that's what my team and I come in and work with. We want to remind them of every opportunity, missed opportunities that they're um, forgetting about, that they weren't, they weren't aware of, or, or they're just like clueless to. So that's where we come in and help them to make sure that they are always presenting the best version of themselves. So, um, and we always, it's interesting, but when we are working with individuals, we always like to start in their closets because their closets very often are emotional triggers. Um, I always say, you know, what's the first room you enter in the mornings when you wake up and what does that room tell us? It, Cause it really reveals so much about them. If there's clutter and chaos, they're starting their day off in clutter and chaos. Mm. So we help them to understand how to their organizational skills. We also are professional organizers. So we help them organize their closets so that when they enter that closet, it's, it's a more calming environment and a more organized environment to get them started with. But there are so many times that the closet is emotional triggers. For example, with my, uh, with a lot of my clients, I'll say, you know, what, outfits. I'll ask them to pull out certain outfits, you know, um, for a professional situation or date night attire or something. Well, what outfit, whenever you put it on, always makes you feel beautiful or sexy or handsome. And it's, an, it's incredible how many times um, that triggers a very um, 
a, a very emotional response because people tend to get so caught up in the day-to-day -day that they forget those those simple things like um, making themselves feel pretty, making themselves feel calm, and making themselves feel organized the first thing in the morning with the closet, with the clothes, with the clutter or the decluttering that we will do for them. And um, sexy, for example, is a real trigger for a lot of people. If I'm working with someone who's going through a um, relationship change, um, very often I'm working with people who've gone through divorce, for example, and they've got to get back out there in the, you know, the dating world. And I'll ask them those questions like whatever, whenever you, you know, what outfit makes you feel sexy or beautiful or handsome when you put it on? Tears often flow with the women because wow. it's been so long since they've, even when you're married, you have to continue to date your spouse. And so we go through all those things. So our, the, uh, the, the logo uh, along with my company is mind, body, lifestyle, because it all kind of flows together. Um, we want to make sure we tap into those emotional responses as well. And yes, we get a lot of clients like you're working with who are going through body image issues, body changes. And I so often get clients who will say, well, as soon as I get my, my uh, perfect weight, or as soon as I lose these 15 or 20 or 30 pounds, and I'm constantly reminding them every day is an opportunity. None of us are guaranteed the next day. So why wait? Because what you, uh, what you are now is just as important as what you may be in the future. So what I found so often is those clients who are going through weight issues, usually they're trying to lose weight. If we give them the best version of themselves at this point, even before they start this weight loss program, and they see their potential at this point, we're connecting with them emotionally, then they're more likely to pursue the weight loss management, uh, the weight management program moving forward. But again, every day is an opportunity. Why wait until? Yeah. Well, so, you know, when you first share with me insight, which as you're sharing right now about uh, the importance of the closet or wherever you get your clothes, uh, having it organized. And I mean, I think everyone could benefit from that. So I would tell anyone who's watching this interview to reach out to you just because that's a benefit. Now, right. as a, as an extremely single man, okay, I have, I want to share something. <laughs> yes. not talk about being single. We are both happily divorced, happily single. Yes. Yeah. So I always say extremely because and people always go, <laughs> what does that mean? I go, that means that I'm not dating anybody. That means that because most people, when you say, are you single? They go, yeah, I'm single. And then you find out they're dating five people. Right. Um, yeah. which, which is fine. To each his own. I'm just saying I'm extremely single. Now, this <laughs> is what I've noticed. And, and tell me if, you, if you've picked this up. So as a single guy, right, when I meet a woman and let's say I go on a date or, what, you know, let's say I meet someone going on a date. I wow. look at, I look at, if she's wearing heels, I look at the back of her heels. Uh-huh. There you go. And if I see scuffs all over it, right? Tells that you means... a lot about person. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So we cover all that. I've got I've got the Is best that right? You actually cover all that? My darling, we have the best shoe refurbisher in the world. Stan okay. Tan <laughs> in North Carolina, but they have satellites all over. And they have my clients from all over the world will ship their handbags, their belts, their shoes to Santana because they will refurbish those scuffed heels and those those little heel tacks that have come off and everything else. Oh no, no. So no, but as far as like what we were talking about a minute ago with organizing, one of my favorite places to go. It's, I think you have them out in LA, don't you? It's the container store. Because I tell my clients, if you're not ready, just go into the container store. A fabulous place. It's the most organized. Uh, it, it's like, I don't know, I'm like a kid in a candy store when I go in there. You'll get so many organizing ideas for your closet. And I also use, you know, those little color palettes, those little color wheels that you can get at Home Depot or one of those mm -hmm. places. I also use one of those. And I'll tell the clients, if you're not ready to work with an organizer, do this, take one of those little color wheels and it sets up kind of the rainbow effect of colors. And then I'll say, utilize that to line up the colors in your wardrobe. And I usually say for, you know, if you're lucky enough to have two clients, do seasonal clients, spring, summer, we group together and fall, winter, we group together. And again, organize according to sleeve length 
And for gentlemen, maybe you order, organize casual and then dress. I worked with the, uh, when I first started this company many years ago, when I moved out of New York and moved to Atlanta, Georgia, um, the in-house counsel for Delta Airlines was one of my first clients. And he was one of the most organized gentlemen I've ever met in my life. And to this day, I still utilize some of the techniques I learned working with him. And he would line up six to eight suits a season. And then on the suit rack, on the suit hanger, he would also line up six ties. And he would rotate each tie in each suit so that he knew for, an, for any given period, he was not having to think about it, but he was not wearing the same look for that period of time. And then he used, always used shoe trees in his shoes because a gentleman who invests in the shoes should always keep their shoes kind of shaped with shoe trees. So, but his closet, when you opened it, was so visually flawless and so rigid. So I think he was also like you, a military gentleman, and so lined up that he never really had to think about it. And it was clean and pristine. His wife on the other side was the most disorganized person. So opposites definitely do attract. She had sweaters dating back to college days. And that was 30 years ago when I started working with her. So we helped clients also edit their closets and get rid of those things that are no longer appropriate. We also help them to understand the importance of a calming environment environment, meaning the closets are for clothes, shoes, accessories, not for your uh, 16 millimeter old films, not for your photo albums, not for your Christmas presents, your baby toys and everything else. Try to eliminate those things that cause clutter. And also when you're working with the closet, try to keep everything off the floor because the minute we start putting things on the floor, that's usually where the clutter starts. Mm. Have everything in appropriate, hopefully contained. We even use clear lucite boxes or plastic bins to put shoes in so that you can see them, but that they're, in, they're contained. And that helps keep that organization. So these are some of the techniques that you can easily learn by just going someplace like a, the container store. I've gone into other organizations organizing stores, but never seen them done to the uh, degree that the container store does. So, and I don't work for them. I don't get anything for saying this, but I've gotten such great ideas from just going into a store like that. Mm. It's interesting when you say that about keeping things off the floor inside of the closet, because when you share, you actually shared that with me a while back and I, I went into my closet um, and I got everything off the floor because I actually was starting to put things on the floor because it was my closet, right? So it's like, and then I was talking to one of my partners and I have a storage unit and I asked him, I said, hey, do you want to come get these things in my production studio? And I said, or otherwise I'll put it in the, in the, in the uh, storage. And his response was, Robert, if you put it in the storage, it'll never leave the storage. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. And, yeah, and he's <laughs> absolutely right. Okay, but going back to to the shoes, the back of the shoes. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Tell me if I'm if I'm picking this up incorrectly or not. But what it also tells me is that that woman gets home, and she just takes her shoes off and throws them somewhere, mm -hmm. or she just tosses them somewhere. She doesn't take the time to take them off. And instead of just tossing them and then putting them in a place, hopefully the, her closet or wherever, where mm -hmm. she's not scuffing them up. Right. And I feel that that's telling me a lot about her organization, which right. if, if your life is chaos, your closet is probably chaos. Am I accurate? Tend that, that's what I'm saying. If you enter into chaos and clutter first thing in the morning, the likelihood is that it extends throughout the day and into a lifestyle situation. So yes. And I definitely think for gentlemen too, I mean, I mean, men were probably brought up more than women to keep their shoes polished at all times. Right. And there were always those, um, the gentlemen that would, um, uh, at the airport or at the stores who used to sit and, you know, take care of your shoes, polish them. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that for women. And, um, what it says to me with the women that I've worked with is if they don't notice things like that, there are probably other areas of their life that are going to kind of fall short as well, because right. those little things, uh, shoes and accessories really say a lot about an individual. 
And a lot of that comes from the fact that we're becoming a more business casual environment in business. Even my Wall Street executives are now going more business casual. You're seeing less and less suited up. Uh, more of my attorneys still tend to, of course, be very suited up for uh, court appearances, that kind of thing. My politicians, mm. very suited up, obviously. Uh, and again, a suit is a sign of respect. However, we are becoming a more business casual environment across the board and throughout the world. And so helping people to understand that is another aspect of what we do. But um, I find that um, people will make their statements so often, especially in a denim environment like we see out on the West Coast, out in Silicon Valley, places like that, where their accessories can be extremely expensive and make such a statement when maybe they're in blue jeans and t-shirts otherwise. Right. So um, people are noticing more and more the accessories, the shoes, the belts, the handbags. We are much more of a um, uh, label conscious uh, society than we've ever been. And so, and those are the accessories by and large. I get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I knew that in having a conversation with you, I would want to go in a whole bunch of directions. So I wrote down three questions okay. just to make sure, because there's people probably going, Man, I need to reach out to this lady. So I think answer to these questions will help those people uh, formulate, mm -hmm. you know, an action step and reach out to you. Okay, so I have three, if you don't mind. All right, um, go for it. So one, I said, how would you describe your business to someone that you met for the first time, right? So you're on the airplane and you sit down and someone, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? So what do you do? Okay, well, again, I'm an image and brand strategist. I work with individuals on all aspects of their personal and professional image, in many cases, rebuilding that. And I work with corporations, um, uh, universities, medical schools, uh, hospitals, organizations on in the different sectors. For example, I'll work with uh, new sales forces coming through those companies and helping them to understand their the corporate environment, helping them to understand the corporate brand and helping them to navigate through that and becoming an extension of that um, entity's brand. So the, how they present themselves. Does that make sense? That makes total sense because as a, so I have a company, I've had employees over the years and I definitely would have benefited from having my employees go through a training with you because I want them to represent a certain thing when someone says, so what is Die Free Life? Oh, you work at Die Free Life? And I want them to look the part. And it's interesting you say that because I had a, a friend of mine who uh, had become a nutritionist and was working with our company. But before that, she spent a lot of time in the fitness world. Mm -hmm. And if you go on Instagram and the social media world and the fitness world, uh, cleavage is a big part of their branding. Now, I'm not going to say all of them, but right. everybody's showing cleavage. Like constantly, like it's all about cleavage. And Where is this, is this with? No, I'm really? saying... I'm saying people in the fitness world. Right, right. Right. So they're constantly showing their body. And it's, it's no secret that sexuality is a big part. What helps them get more likes. Mm -hmm. It helps them get more followers. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these young girls are growing up. And that's just a big part of, of, of branding. Because, I mean, think about it. If, you, if I show cleavage today, I get 10 more likes. If I mm -hmm. go conservative and I'm not showing it, I don't get any more likes. Right. So they, I mean, I'm not going to say they have low self-esteem, but when you see that if I want more likes and that becomes important to me, right. then I'm going to show more of my body. Right. Well, the work that I do, working with hospitals, insurance companies, uh, I prefer a little bit more of a conservative approach. Of course. And so my recommendation, I sat down with her and I said, hey, this is how you're coming across to the people that I'm engaging with. Right now, now you can do your, you can, I'm not telling you to stop doing who you feel you are, but I'm just letting you know that you're not coming across as someone who has con like real content, like substance to share. And this is not judgmental. So I don't need anybody emailing and texting me, but mm -hmm. you just don't come across like, like you have, a, like there's a brain. Right. 
Exactly. Yeah, you come across like, look at me, look at me. And so after we had that conversation, um, she actually on her own was like, hmm, that actually makes a lot of sense. And she made a shift and she still was able to get likes, but yet she came across in a way where it's like, I'm going to respect what she has to say. It's not just about looking at her. Right. Well, and again, you have to consider your um, your environment. You have to consider your client base. Um, also, whoever you're representing, if she's working in a corporate situation or any situation outside of what you're saying, which is uh, fitness and exercise, where it may be in that case, you're saying cleavage seems to be relevant. Um, <laughs> for, I, first, I normally will meet with the HR people and find out if there's a dress code policy in place. Very often their dress code policies are antiquated because again, you've got to keep up with the fact that we're moving into in general terms, a more business casual environment. So we need to make sure that their dress code policies are up to date. We may often work with the uh, HR people on dress code policy. And if there is a specific dress code policy, then they, and on top of that, they may have reached out to me already and said, we have a particular problem, like what you're referencing, cleavage, that kind of thing, short skirts, uh, too uh, nightclub looking for our environment. Uh, they may reach out to us to coach these people, to work with these people on their professional image. Mm. Um, what I have found, by and large, women who are overtly sexual in the workplace normally have low self-esteem and don't understand what they're what they are uh, presenting and um, the message that they're sending so we will work with them on understanding that and um, and help them to work through that because again we've been probably um, retained by the company for that specific reason this person uh, I've had this happen several times I moved my company to um, uh, the Chapel Hill area, uh, Research Triangle Park is uh, within 10 to 15 minutes of where I live. And um, I moved it there strategically because I wanted to become more global. And Research Triangle Park has some of the top global companies in the world located there. And so we started doing corporate presentations to companies like Cisco and like SAS. We would do day long presentations and we would start early in the morning at eight o'clock and do the initial introductions and start with introductory techniques, uh, co uh, communication techniques, um, visual presentations, and, and it would evolve throughout the day. And for example, when we broke for lunch, we continued our presentation working on uh, table etiquette. And then we would go back and at the end of the day, we would usually do a session on grooming and uh, makeup techniques and that kind of thing. But it was a full day presentation. And we did this to a number of the companies represented there. And um, I was working with um, one of those companies and one of their HR people came to me and they said, we've got this incredible intern that came out of Duke University, let's say. I, I can't remember. She was either Duke or UNC. We love her. She's great. But nobody takes her seriously because she still looks like she is dressing, like she's going to a star mixer. And she was brilliant. They brought her in because her CV, her resume looked amazing, but they were, no one was taking her seriously because of her visual presentation. Now, in this case, it wasn't cleavage. It was just her choice of colors, her choice of makeup, her choice of, of jewelry and shoes. So, um, and the length of her skirts. And so we worked with her and completely transformed her. And then she was able to get on board, no longer as an intern, but, but as a permanent employee, because it was just a matter of tweaking her because she was not representing the brand that she had so successfully built on paper. And it was not, it was not translated well visually. So we're making sure that everything syncs together so that you're getting the most bang for your buck, the most visual opportunity as, as well as communication opportunities, as well as your, your CV and your resume opportunities. We'll work with resume experts to make sure all of those things are put into place. So you are yourself. And the other thing I point out to people, Robert, is 
if you think about it, the majority of our waking hours are spent working. So knowing that, you and I talked about this when, when we were talking about doing this presentation, is um, how do we go into our job situation and, and our, um, our level of happiness and our level of satisfaction in our jobs? And one of the things I work with when I'm working with my clients on really getting inside their heads and tapping into, think about where your passions lie, what makes you happy. Because before you go into this job interview, is this the best opportunity for you? Will this bring you the best level of happiness and, and satisfaction? Because the majority of your waking hours are spent in that job every day. And so, level of satisfaction and happiness and have you researched that company carefully because so many of these campuses offer so many extracurricular and extra opportunities uh, where I worked in um, Chapel Hill and being on research, at research Triangle Park I learned the term campus early on and these companies these corporations have the most incredible campuses and offer so many wonderful opportunities um you know on site for i mean salons to uh to uh child care to you name it they have it and to bring in that level of job satisfaction because they realize the importance of that so when i'm working with my clients i'm also saying are you researching those companies before you go into them to make sure this is a good fit for you because the level of happiness and satisfaction in that the majority of your hours are spent there are so vital and important. And you can sense that when you go on these campuses. The, the, um, and I always suggest too, uh, finding out if you can, who had the job that you're going into and what happened to that person and finding out kind of indirectly the job satisfaction level all the way around. So it's a matter of doing your homework due diligence, making sure that you understand what you're getting involved with and making sure that is really the best fit for you. And sometimes we're even working with kids in the universities on um, their career objectives and before they go into their uh, whatever degree they're interested in going in. So again, it starts with the mind and then it goes from there. Okay, well, thank you. So we're gonna go to my, se my second question, you ready? Bye. So I'm going to read it because I actually wrote this out. Dun, dun. It says, you have so many skills that can be applied to everything from organizing a closet to making over an executive or celebrity's wardrobe, right? Mm -hmm. Would I be correct to say that a clean, and I know we're in the closet. I'm just stressing. This is very important. That a clean and organized closet can be the foundation for updating or upgrading other areas of a person's life. Absolutely, absolutely. Because it's what we talked about earlier. I think mm -hmm. um, getting the organization out of the way, because I have so many clients who will come to me and say, I have a closet full of clothes and nothing to wear. And I don't have time. I'm too busy. They're, they may be um, career mothers who, have, who are juggling childcare and, and all the extracurricular activities. And at the same time, they're working a full-time job. Uh, the majority of my clients are C-suite executives or heads of, corpor uh, uh, heads of universities, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But I work with every area, um, every, I even work with stay-at-home moms. So I'm not limiting myself. I'm saying the majority of them are, are very busy. A lot of them travel extensively. A lot of them travel uh, internationally. So we help them to set up these closets and get rid of the things that are no longer relevant to their lifestyle and their career objectives. Mm. And then we help them to understand what's missing. Uh, I think you're hearing the term more and more capsule wardrobes. So we're kind of what I help my clients to kind of focus on. Yeah, I've what, never heard that, by the way. Yeah, it, it can kind of limiting, kind of reducing to get rid of the clutter and just having those most important elements in your wardrobe so that you don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about it in the morning. And what I'm also helping my clients to understand is how to shop, how to shop, not the trends, how to shop 
your best style and shop the classics, things that are gonna withstand the trends and the test of time so that you're investing in a wardrobe so that you're not having to start over every year or keep adding and adding and adding. You can seasonally do seasonal updates and occasionally, let's face it, things do die. I've got things I can still wear that have been in my closet for 20 or 30 years because they're not extremes when it comes to trends. They're not super padded uh, shoulders or extreme lapels or things like that, um, outrageous prints. There, um, I always say if the outfit enters the room before you do, and unless it's a $3,000 ball gown, if it enters the room before you do, there's a problem. You're wearing the outfit and not the other way around. So the first thing we help clients to understand is what's their best colors, what's their best styles, and dress for the body you have now. And then if you are going through weight loss, you can still alter these pieces down up to 35 pounds. If you're going more than 35 pounds, yes, we may in fact have to start a new wardrobe after that point in time. But the body frame itself, as you and I both know, is the same, the frame, the bone structure is the same. The pounds, we can help them to work with pieces that are going to be able to be altered in. I work with a great uh, team of uh, tailors that we can work with, but we can alter in up to 35 pounds down, okay? And then after that, it may be time to, that. yes, we may need to update after that. But by that time, clients are so excited about the fact that they've lost more than 35 pounds. But again, it's the importance of understanding that every day is that opportunity. And since none of us are guaranteed more than that day, let's make the most of every single day. Right. <clears throat> so in answer to your question, Closets, yes. I think organizing those closets, getting the pieces, getting rid of the things that when I hear clients say the closet full of clothes and nothing to wear, getting rid of those excess pieces that you just can't let go of. There are great consignment stores, or you can write them off as a business, excuse me, you can write them off on your taxes. I, I think you have to work with your canons on what can be written off and what can't. But a lot of times just donating those things to charities and getting a tax write off. Um, is much better. Uh, a lot of clients want to try to reinvent certain pieces. And a lot of times by the time you've reinvented those things and restyled them, it's a lot better and a lot cheaper just to go ahead and, and buy something new. So we'll help them with all of those things as well. Okay. So <clears throat> thir third question, many companies are wanting to create a culture that is filled with high morale, drive, and respect. How would you help a company establish such a culture? Mm. Well, and it's interesting um, thinking about that. First of all, I work with all different levels within the companies, within the organizations, within the corporations. So if I'm working with the C-suite executives, that's where a lot of the decisions come from. So talking with them and, and finding out how they are doing to focus on um, corporate morale and um, and what they're doing themselves to help along with that. Those, I can work with them on that level. But if I'm working with somebody, let's say, who's entry level, who's just starting off, um, first of all, I'm gonna go through what you and I talked about earlier and making sure that this is the right fit for them. If they've done their due diligence, because as much as the company is what they want, are they, uh, is this the right company for them? So we'll work with them on that because I think morale starts in the beginning. And so if it's a good fit for them and if their passion lies in this company, you're more likely get to get that positive um, response. If I'm working with somebody entry level, somebody who's going through the process, it's like I said before, let's make sure this is the right fit for you. Let's make sure that this is where your passion and your interest truly lie and where they're going to get the most from you as well. If it's a good fit on both ends. So that always helps as far as the high morale, et cetera, is if this is a good fit, you're going to be a self-starter, self-motivator. That really makes such a difference. If going into it, it's the right fit for you. And then again, we're working with the different levels as we're going into these companies. So making sure that we get the appropriate feedback that we can share with these companies. If something's missing, 
Um, it's usually a matter of us just being able to communicate openly with them about that. If they're bringing us in for that reason, then it's first that we have to establish a real trust relationship with the individuals or the sectors that we're working with and can get good, solid understanding and feedback on what might be missing. But again, a lot of it's just research because some of the companies I've worked with, for example, SAS in Research Triangle Park in Raleigh, is um, has been over the years voted as the top company to work for as as far as company morale and um, corporate morale. So what are they doing correctly? And we've had the opportunity to work with so many of their sectors and kind of get a good feel for what's going on there. And again, is what they also bring to the table um, as far as extracurricular, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, so. I think that it starts with the individual and then kind of grows from there. And that's, yeah. I mean, everything you do is amazing, but that definitely is a cherry on the pie because all the way to the grave, baby, we're branding ourselves. Right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, and you know, you and I have gone through, I've just gone through what double mastectomy and breast cancer. And I've just gone through that in the last few months and still awaiting the next surgery and um, realizing, you know, I've, I've experienced, I was blessed. I was so blessed that we were able to, to get rid of the cancer. It's gone. I'm now cancer free. I'm just having to go through the, the process of the surgeries. But um, to realize I'm one of the lucky ones. But I have had the, the, a, a, an incredible gift to be able to experience the other side when mm. it wasn't, so, when they weren't so lucky and to be a part of that so well well you are you are a true wonder woman and uh, <laughs> i'm we, just me i'm just me i'm a i'm a mama with two children uh, i don't want to leave anytime soon i'm here okay well we've made available your info so people can reach out to you if they want to learn more um in closing uh, i mean you've given a lot and i know there's a whole bunch more you could talk about but is there anything else you want to leave for those who are meeting you for the first time? No, there is no limit to, uh, I, the only thing I, I would say is there's no limit to the clients that we've worked with. I've worked, it's who who we feel is a, a we. it's a, it's a very um, personal relationship I have with my clients. And I always say, let's meet. Normally I say, let's meet in your closet because I want you to get to know me because it's, it's important for you to know me and connect with me and feel comfortable with me and confident with me as it is for me to feel that with you because this is a personal relationship that we're building. So for those individual clients, I say, reach out to me. We can see if it's a good fit. Uh, with the majority of my high profile clients, my celebrities, my politicians, et cetera, we sign a confidentiality agreement. But in any case, whenever I'm with my clients, wherever I am, I always introduce them as friends. Um, it's a confidential relationship. If they choose to share that I'm a stylist working with them, whatever, that's fine. But I have had the privilege of working with all people from all walks of life. And it's just been so rewarding. As I said, I started this business many years ago and we're still going strong. And I feel so fortunate that, that we have um, succeeded. And, and it's been, a, it's a, been a, great, a great ride so far. It's my passion. All right, well, you guys heard it here. If you wanna understand image, branding, how you wanna come across or be perceived where you can maximize your opportunity, I would reach out to Wendy find out more. And uh, other than that, thank you, Wendy, for making time for us. Thank you, my dear friend. It's always a pleasure spending time with you. All right, you guys, until the next one. Peace.